So there are many affordable options. Uh, some of those could include uh, all new. Some of those could include a mix of uh, refurbished or recertified equipment and new. That all depends on what the doctor wants. Uh, but there's some very, very good options from our suppliers out there that are very affordably priced uh, in, the, in the new market now that uh, you, you really don't have to spend the money that uh, some, so many people have been led to. Welcome back to another episode of the Shared Practices Podcast. Uh, we got a good interview for you today. I got the guys from Dental Planet, uh, one of our sponsors this season, talking about some of the things that you need to keep in mind uh, when buying equipment. Um, but before we get into that, I totally forgot to introduce my co-host, Dr. Jonas Ashbaugh. How's it going today, Jonas? Hey, fantastic. How are you? Pretty good. Were you going to say happy? <laughs> no, no. No, I, man. Uh, yeah, happy Sunday. Uh, happy Sunday. Yeah, we're recording this on a Sunday. So we'll go ahead and jump right into the interview, and then we'll talk about your equipment um, and all that you considered uh, in the outro. All right, we'll jump right into the interview with the guys from Dental Planet. I'm excited to have with me here today... Bob Payan and Tony Brumley from our Season 3 sponsor, Dental Planet. And today in this episode, we're going to talk about um, equipment, um, purchasing equipment, and all the considerations that you need to make as you're going through the process of starting your own practice. So I'm going to go ahead and let uh, Bob and Tony introduce themselves. How's it going today, guys? It is going great, George. We sure appreciate the opportunity to uh, visit with you and the audience uh, on Shared Practice. Thanks, Bob. And would you take a minute and introduce yourself to our audience? Sure. Uh, my name is Bob Payton. I am the uh, president of Dental Planet. We are located in North Texas, and uh, this company has been around uh, about 20 years or so, something like that. And, and Tony, uh, our vice president of sales, uh, you've been around uh, a lot longer than I have in the business. <laughs> that is correct. I'm going on uh, just over 13 years now. Again, my name is Tony Brumley. I'm the vice president of sales and marketing with Dental Planet. And uh, appreciate uh, you having us on today, George. No problem. So obviously you guys work with doctors um, who are in the process of starting practices. I'd imagine that's a, a big percentage of, you know, those people who come to you and need a lot of equipment. When you're in the process of buying or starting a practice, you know, what are the most important things that you guys um, need to consider like when purchasing equipment? Well, it, we understand it's a, a big undertaking for for doctors, and you want to choose equipment that's affordable, functional, and fits your budget. You want to work with the right bank, and doing that, there's a lot that goes into it. You want equipment that is aesthetically pleasing, uh, but again, you want to plan while during the design phase of what equipment it will be going into um, that practice. Um, there's obviously different uh, options that you can go with as far as a, an open concept that requires center island cabinets and then a uh, closed concept. So depending on which route uh, you go, you want to uh, consider what equipment will be going in uh, in the office that way. You bring up an interesting point, Tony. A couple things. First, I want to ask you about uh, banking and how that influences um, the process of buying equipment. So in your experience, what types of things uh, make it smoother or more difficult depending on the bank? We've actually got uh, a couple banks that we work with on on a lot of our deals. And you want a bank that is familiar with working with dentists and that has has done dental practices before. It makes the process go much faster. It's much more efficient. It goes much smoother that way. They know the lingo. They know what the doctor is going through. Some of the hurdles that uh, that they've they've got to to jump over to get uh, their practice going and and going uh, on time and starting on time. So those are some of the key factors. Very very good. And the other question I had for you, based on what you said, was talking about equipment planning uh, during the time of design. I think that's interesting because as we have been talking about it in the season. Maybe we haven't released the episode yet, but we talk about during the process of construction, um, there's kind of a lull where you're, I guess, more or less on the sidelines. And that's a time where we think it would be great to, you know, make all those equipment selections and get that process going. So um, if I'm hearing you correctly, you recommend doing it sooner um, when you're designing the space so that you can accommodate whatever equipment you may want in the design. That's absolutely correct. A lot of times uh, the doctors will get will, will start the equipment process a little later in the planning or in the construction stage and 
And that's right. There's there is a little bit of a lull that we can fill that in with uh, with looking for equipment, making sure the equipment fits properly. Again, there's plenty of different options as far as the type of equipment that you use in the open or close concept. Again, do you want to go with a rear delivery system? Do you want to go with an over the patient delivery system? A radius delivery, in either in other words, it goes left or right for left or right-handed uh, dentist. So those are some things that you've got to look at. But the time to uh, to start looking at the equipment is sooner rather than later. The the last thing that we want is an equipment company is us holding the the uh, holding up the the opening dates of of the practice. So ideally, we we want the equipment order placed eight weeks before open date. Minimum would be six weeks. A, a lot of times when you're working with um, manufacturers or vendors, they've got a pretty full pipeline, so we want to make sure that uh, we don't get put uh, behind schedule in that matter. The cabinets is a big part of that. Cabinets historically cause delay in opening a practice. You know, depending on how many cabinets are going in that practice can cause a delay. So, yes, again, the sooner the better. On the topic of cabinets, I always felt like that was one area where people um, in the in the whole budget, I feel like they spend too much money on their cabinets. Um, I don't know. Maybe that's just me. But what are what are your thoughts on um, cabinets specifically and maybe some other areas where people might splurge? That is an area that can definitely uh, blow a budget out is cabinet. You can do everything from a rear cabinet to, to side cabinets or replace that with an island cabinet. There are options out there that can help and decrease the, the cost of cabinets. You wanna go with a reputable company. We've got uh, different sources that we use that uh, won't break the bank in that area. Yeah, you can get as fancy as you want. You do wanna make sure that use industry standard products or materials, if you will, when making the cabinets, metal bases, high pressure laminate, things like that. Uh, but again, you don't. it doesn't have to involve or include all the bells and whistles that uh, you see some of the, the manufacturers out there use. Other areas that uh, I think dentists can look at to save a little bit of money would be on, on x-rays. If I can see the, the industry going towards more of a handheld x-ray rather than a periapical x-ray being in each individual operatory, you can use a handheld in between two or three different operatories rather than having Again, one in each operatory, so that'll save a little bit of money that way. Uh, when you're opening, uh, rather than plumb for nitrous, you can use uh, a mobile nitrous uh, on a four-tank stand and move that room to room. Uh, that would definitely help save some money in that area as well. One of the other things, uh, Tony and George, that, that we help a lot of dentists build out their practice, uh, just because you've got all of that square footage, uh, doesn't mean that you have to outfit all of it at once. If this is a new practice that you're going to be growing, let's let's not be afraid to go ahead and do two or, or three operatories, and, and that doesn't fill all of the rooms all at once. And then we can come back and, and fill in as the business continues to grow. But I think that's one thing people think, well, we want to go ahead and get everything set up. But, boy, then, then they've got that, that big monthly note or whatever. Let's make it manageable and make sure that, that you can go ahead and get some traction in that location and, and really get things going and then add to as you need to. That's a great point, Bob. That's exactly right. And Tony, uh, did you guys have anything else on um, some areas where people might splurge a little bit? Yeah, I think another area you want to look at is if you're going to go digital, are you going to go with a just a, a regular panoramic x-ray or are you going to go with a pan Seth? Are you going to go with a comb beam? There are options out there that uh, don't need to break the bank. One of them could be a certified pre-owned um, x-ray in that area, um, or it could be a, a manufacturer that may not be as well known as some of the, the larger names, but offer a very good product with a good warranty. But uh, I see that being an area where definitely doctors can save uh, a lot of money. Another may be in the mechanical room area. You want to make sure that don't underestimate the number of users, but but don't uh, overestimate either. You you want to make sure you have the right size vacuum pump and compressor for the practice that you're going to be operating. But many times we we may go a little overboard in that area. So make sure you've got the the proper 
uh, compressor and vacuum pump for the the uh, the number of users that you're going to be using. And uh, Tony, you talked about cone beams. I, I wanted to. Um, I think that's kind of a hot topic right now. People are looking to buy them at I think rates that are a lot faster than maybe we expected. And I'm curious to get your thoughts on you know what in your mind would be one of the best ways to buy a cone beam um, in terms of you know refurbished, pre certified, pre owned. And what price points you know you're seeing them at right now? Sure, we've got multiple options in that area. That is definitely a hot item in the industry right now. You hear the 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 lines of the care streams, the Serona, Plan Mecca, Vatex. We've got those certified pre-owned, and really those can range anywhere from uh, now uh, a, a certified pre-owned can range from about thirty thousand dollars. And you can go all the way up to uh, that hundred to one hundred twenty-five or one hundred fifty thousand dollars in that range. We like to keep it somewhere in that thirty to seventy-five thousand dollar range. Um, that is affordable, uh, and I think that that will do everything that the the doctor wants it to do. Um, there's a couple brands out there that we like to use uh, new. Uh, those are the uh, Ray America brands and the Awandi brands, uh, but we also sell a lot. Again, on the recertified side, is sell a lot of Vatex, a lot of care streams as well when the doctor's wanting to go or move towards 3D or cone beam. So uh, real quick, those new, um, the brands that you mentioned that you guys like to sell new, uh, are those within that same price point? They are, actually. I'll give you an example. The, the Ray America, um, they've got a great, uh, it's basically a two-in-one unit that uh, they offer in two-in-one. Basically, what that will allow the, the dentist to do is to, it can do 2D or 3D. That is in that um, $85,000 to, to $90,000 range. Oh, wow. And then um, last thing on the comb beam would be the difference between getting um, maybe a refurbished one versus a certified pre-owned. How, how do you guys contrast those two options? Well, it boils down to really what the doctor's budget is. If if we're you know if we're, we've got kind of a low budget, then we will move the the doctor more towards a certified pre-owned. Again, all of the certified pre-owns will come with at least a one-year uh, warranty, uh, with the option of getting an extended warranty. And it also boils down to the doctor's preference as far as what brand or manufacturer uh, he or she wants to go with. Again, a, a big seller is going to be a Care Stream on the certified pre-owned. The Vatec is is a big one. But uh, again, sometimes a, a doctor will uh, want a, all the bells and whistles, and that's where we can come in with a, a brand new Array America, and it, it's got everything that the, the doctor wants. Okay. And then my question for you is, you know, now that we've purchased all this equipment, and you said eight weeks in advance, I'm assuming some of it might come a little early. Uh, where do people normally store it uh, in advance? You know, maybe they can't get into the building. Maybe there's a construction delay. Um, where do people store all the equipment usually? That's a great question. Yes, obviously, when a practice is being open, there's very little storage. There's a lot going on at the facility. Last thing you want to do is store that equipment at that uh, location and having people stack things on it or move it around and something gets broken. Uh, what we like to do is we've got uh, plenty of warehouse space at our, our location. We like to bring everything to our facility first, um, house it here. And then when the doctor gives us the go-ahead, we ship it all at once uh, with our technicians so it all gets there at the same time and, and gets installed properly. Oh, so you guys actually install the equipment? We've got nationwide service providers that, uh, that we work with all over the country. We, we've got some that are here that, that we send out, uh, and then we've got other ones that are located around the country. But yes, we... Do we handle all of the uh, installation and the service and any warranty issues, all of that uh, nationwide? Okay, and you know if I'm if I'm looking to the, looking to do a startup, um, you know I I would know my biggest expense is construction, and then I think my second biz, biggest expense would be most likely my equipment. Um, so first, I, I'm assuming that's correct, but if it's not, correct me. But what would be the budget that I could expect based on number of operatories to spend on my equipment total? Obviously, that's going to vary with what bells and whistles along the lines of, of what Tony was saying. But you can do, uh, so, so many people think it's going to be another uh, six figures 
just like their construction budget is or something like that. And we've got two op packages with everything that you need uh, equipment wise, uh, starting a little bit over $35,000 going up to about $50,000. Um, if you had a, a three op office that, that you're wanting to open an outfit, uh, everything that you need, then this is including the, the, the uh, back room uh, equipment as well. Uh, you're talking sixty to seventy five thousand dollars. So there are many affordable options. Uh, some of those could include uh, all new. Some of those could include a mix of uh, refurbished or recertified equipment and new. That all depends on what the doctor wants. Uh, but there's some very, very good options from our suppliers out there that are very affordably priced uh, in, the, in the new market now that uh, you, you really don't have to spend the money that uh, some, so many people have been led to. And that's exactly right. Uh, Bob brings up a good point, as he did earlier. When starting a practice, ultimately, if the doctor wants to go with a four to six op practice, again, start with two or three ops and get those up and running, get your patient load up, and then equip those operatories as your patient load increases. But there are the the, the three-op practice uh, or, or op um, package that Bob mentioned uh, that will include a panoramic x-ray as well. Uh, you don't have to spend that typical $150,000 budget on brand new equipment when, when opening a practice. It can be done in, in phases or stages as well. So we've talked a lot about what's required to take that great step forward into your first practice. There are so many elements to consider in this process that it's easy to downplay the importance of one absolutely critical component, location. Or as the marketing gurus say, location, location, location. Many of our colleagues limit themselves and their potential success by simply trusting a realtor to find an appropriate space. Realtors have a wide wealth of knowledge and local knowledge but even a commercial specialist is unlikely to know or understand the unique criteria that can make or break a dental practice. However, our sponsor, Design Ergonomics, is familiar with these criteria because they've been designing, equipping, and training the nation's most productive offices for the last 20 years. Dental Ergonomics offers a clarity site selection service that covers an astounding number of individual data points, over 100. These include population demographics, traffic patterns, visibility, municipal regulations, the competitive landscape, and more. Running these points through an analysis algorithm, they provide a simple, categorized report and an overall ranking, making it much easier to compare locations. This can be an invaluable tool to narrow down your targets. If you've pinpointed a few potential sites on your own or through a realtor, but as a busy dentist, we often don't have time to do the initial search in the first place. And if you're looking in an area 30 or 40 miles away, you may not know exactly where to start. The logistics of that might be challenging and will be very time consuming. Regardless, Design Ergonomics has a solution here as well. A second level of site selection called Focus. With the Focus site selection, the research will do the legwork for you. Through remote and on-site investigation, they'll generate profiles for up to five top-notch locations that will work with your vision and goals. This allows you to make an informed decision on just on the right spot to build the practice of your dreams. For more information on site selection and other dental ergonomic services, go to www.desergo.com. Enter promo code shared location on the contact page to receive a $300 off discount of clarity or focus site selection services for a limited time. Again, that's www.desergo.com. Enter the promo code shared location on the contact page to receive a discount off of the clarity or focus site selection services. So what would be the additional cost then? So if I'm, if I'm opening two or three ops, and I, I'm, I'm feeling like I need to add a hygienist or something, and so now I need a fourth op, um, whatever it may be. So, you know, first, how long would it take to equip that additional operatory? And then second, what would be my added cost uh, for an additional operatory? Good question. Again, lead times will depend depending on what equipment you want in there, but it's you want to allow at least four weeks. Um, the equipment that would be included in that operatory would be the chair, uh, the delivery unit, 
the light, uh, the assistance vacuum package, uh, and again, depending on how the office is set up, it will, might include a, a wall mount x-ray or you may just stay with the handheld. Goes back to the cabinetry, do you want to go with the, a rear cabinet or will it have a side cabinet in there? But typically, um, you can equip that extra operatory anywhere uh, with us, anywhere from around six to, you can go as high as $12,000 to get that chair, unit, and light. One of the things that we like to do is include both, not, not only just a, a refurbish, we do hybrid packages. In other words, the chair will be refurbished, and when we refurbish a chair, it'll include brand new paint, brand new upholstery. Uh, again, everything comes with a warranty, and then we might put a new delivery unit on it from one of our partners like BDS, uh, Beaver State. We like to do that, uh, put a new delivery unit, new vacuum package group, um, and then uh, a newer or used or refurbished light on there as well. But again, allow at least four weeks. Um, if if the, there's a time crunch there, we can usually get it out in three weeks and 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 get that space filled if if the patient load is is increasing drastically. And then uh, I had a question for you about the delivery units. Most people I know that start practices um, go with the rear delivery. I don't know what you guys think about them. Uh, I'm honestly not too familiar um, with the you know the pros and cons of the different delivery units. Um, so can you take us through those just for a second? Sure. We offer uh, the rear delivery. We offer the over the patient, uh, and again the radius or the the left right options. One of the benefits uh, of the rear delivery, I think there's a lot of schools going in that direction, is that it's less intimidating for the patient when they walk in. They don't walk in and see a chair with a, a delivery unit and hand pieces there, and and all all kinds of bad thoughts start coming to their heads. So that's that's one one uh, uh, reason that uh, doctors like going to that. It, it's a cleaner look when you walk into the operatory. Everything is behind the patient's head, obviously. But uh, if you go with the over the patient, that means that everything is mounted to the chair. There is a chair bracket um, that a two-inch post goes into, and you mount on that two-inch post the delivery unit, the assistance vacuum package, and then uh, the light goes on there as well. So everything is kind of included in right in uh, right on the uh, the chair. The radius that I keep talking about will also include the delivery units, which you can move left or right side. It will include a light, which moves left or right. And then again, the assistance uh, uh, package, which will move left or right. Um, you can change that up a little bit as well. Going back to the rear treatment, if you want uh, the uh, a, a rear treatment delivery unit, you mount that to a, a 12 o'clock cabinet. And then you can just have the chair sitting there with a ceiling mounted light. Or you may want to just have the light mounted to the chair. You know, there's several options that we can walk uh, the doctor or the, the uh, patient or the uh, customer through to make sure that uh, they get exactly what they want. Awesome. I think that was a great summary. Uh, thank you very much, Tony, for that. And I wanted to ask you guys, you know, at the beginning we had talked about designing the office and equipment considerations. Do you guys have any stories or any tidbits um, from your experiences that uh, may may talk about, like, if you don't do that step, you know, what has happened um, in specific situations where it's been an issue? Oh, where do I start? <laughs> uh, <laughs> we do have plenty of, of, of stories like that. The key is, you know, it's the, the old adage, measure twice, cut once. During the design phase, you want to make sure that and there can be changes as you go through the process, but you want to get a design done by a company that has done dental offices before, and that would be Dental Plan. We've done, we've done several. I, I can't even count how many we've done over the years. But you want to make sure that uh, that it's done properly. You want to make sure that you get a contractor involved that has ideally that has done many dental offices because it is it's quite an undertaking, and there's a lot of a lot of areas that uh, you don't want to shortcut. When doing the design, uh, again, as we mentioned earlier, you want to make sure you have an idea of the equipment that you want going in there so you can lay it out properly. Uh, again, going with, are you going to go with center island cabinets or are you going to go with walls? Um, there's also an option of you can go with a T-wall with, a, with a, a center island that will go in front of that T-wall where the sink can be shared between, between operatories. 
So there's a lot of options that we can go with, but you want to make sure that you allow enough time to get the planning done, do all that during the the pre-construction phase, if you will, so you're not having to redo a lot of that. Also allow enough time when the office is at a completion. You're, You're just about to that completion date. Allow enough time before when you're installing the equipment before your your opening date, if you will. We see a lot of times where the doctor says, okay, the office is ready. I am opening on Monday the 1st, uh, so why don't you bring your equipment in here on Friday the 30th? (laughs) It just doesn't work that way. You want to allow at least a week, ideally two weeks before opening date to get that equipment installed because one thing I tell my customers is that it's not that there it, there's something that's going to go wrong on that that installation. So we're going to make sure that we take care of it in a timely fashion. We try to dot all the I's, we try to cross all the T's, but things will go wrong. So allow that in your schedule when installing this equipment to make sure that you're you don't put yourself in a crunch uh, before that opening date. Next thing you know, you're having to reschedule patients. So I, I can't tell you how many times George that. We've had a a delivery all set, even on the truck, ready to leave our our plant. And we talk to the doctor again or or the construction manager, and there's been another delay in the construction process. And so we've got to pull off for a week or maybe two. So it it could happen anywhere along the line, uh, but we see a lot of uh, construction estimates given that uh, just – don't come out realistic because of issues that come up or whatever. And so uh, we're we're pushed back and then it's hurry up, hurry up. And nobody likes to have that office open and sitting there not generating any revenue. But by the same token, staff would like the opportunity to get in there and make sure, uh, you know, all all of the instruments and and supplies are in the right cabinets and all those kind of things before patients are are coming in and, and greeting them. So uh, boy, a, a few extra days, as, as Tony says, uh, to give yourself a, a little wiggle room there uh, sure helps manage the expectations for everybody. Yeah, the key there is is, is the communication part of it. Having a, a design build team that communicates with each other. And again, the last thing that we want to do is, is show up with the to the office when the office isn't ready, which has happened several, several times. We'll call the contractor or maybe the project manager says, we've got the equipment. Are you all ready for us? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, we get there and the fr- the floors aren't done. Well, I didn't know the floors weren't supposed to be done. So what we tell our clients is, as an equipment company, we are the last ones in that office. Floors need to be done. Paint needs to be on the wall. We come in, put in the equipment, hook up the, the mechanical room, the, the operatories to the J boxes, Uh, put that pan on the wall, and and get things going. Um, Again, it's all about the planning. Um, You want to put as much time into the planning of your new practice as possible. It starts with the the legal entity that you you want to, that you go with, the lease negotiation, to the design phase of it, to the engineering phase of it, uh, then to the construction, and then ultimately to the grand opening. But planning that systematically and having a plan in place throughout the process helps everybody to get to hit that date, uh, that opening date. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, for somebody to finish construction, I think their opening in two or three days would be a little ambitious, just not even from the equipment standpoint, but then they have to unpack all their furniture and put everything up and, you know, I mean, get the computers in there. Exactly. Uh, I mean, that's like a four week process probably, you know, working all day. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I would encourage everybody to be realistic and, um, have construction finished before you even, you know, try doing any of that. Yeah, definitely exactly. great and, advice. And, and and help help yourself on this. Bring in an expert. You know, even if you think you're you're the dentist and and uh, so you don't have anything to do until it does get open, so you can manage the process. Uh, there's people that do this all the time and get these uh, you know these offices open and uh, bring all those multiple parties together and. Uh, boy, if you can rely on them uh, to to be doing that, you could be out doing some marketing and letting people know that your office is getting getting ready to open soon and those kind of things. 
instead of uh, meeting with every subcontractor that walks through the door uh, and, and trying to make every single decision. Uh, this is this is one of those that, that form and function need to, to match up, and you need somebody thinking about those and, and asking you, the dentist, the end customer, those tough questions so you do think it through and plan it accordingly. That's that's a great point, Bob. And we, we work with uh, multiple consultants uh, in the industry, and I can't tell you how much smoother it goes when, when having them uh, help with the planning um, and and the construction of a, of a new office. Here at Dental Planet, we're here to help. We've done multiple, many, many new offices, and we can walk you through that as well. But sometimes it's just necessary to get that that consultant because, again, it is a huge undertaking, and, and uh, you want to make sure you do it right. I think that's a great point. You know, a lot of times the cost of somebody like that can be a deterrent, but ultimately the benefit that they can provide for you um, is almost everlasting because of the fact that you, you know, this is a process you're going to do once most likely. And so uh, to have it done right is uh, invaluable. Exactly. When most people think about a startup, they think that they are expensive and time consuming. I'm here today to tell you that they are right, but it doesn't have to be. Starting a dental practice presents a list of challenges, but when it comes to making decisions about where to purchase your dental equipment, I recommend Dental Planet. Dental Planet provides affordable, comprehensive services that simplify the startup, expansion, or renovation process while dramatically improving your ROI of the entire project. If you need equipment, Dental Planet has new, factory recertified, and Dental Planet certified pre-owned digital imaging systems. As you know, a lot of your success as a startup is based on your ability to provide a great experience for your patients. The same can be said about Dental Planet. They provide telephone, email, and remote support as well as multiple financing solutions. Dental Planet is even more affordable than many of their competitors. All products include a warranty backed by a nationwide network of service providers along with expert sales consultants and technicians. Thousands of more items, including dental supplies, are also available when you use Dental Planet. Buying equipment for your startup doesn't have to be expensive with Dental Planet. You can save between 40 to 60%. See how easy and affordable upgrading, replacing, or expanding can be when you team up with Dental Planet. Just mention shared practices to get a discount on your already low prices. Learn more at dentalplanet.com. Again, that's D-E-N-T-A-L-P-L-A-N-E-T.com. Again, mention shared practices to get a discount on your entire order. And so I, w- I wanted to use um, the remainder of our time, I'll open the floor to you guys. I think I had some pre um, pre questions for you that I think we went through. Um, so, you know, in your experience, people opening up practices, uh, what what general advice can you guys give them, both from an equipment standpoint and just from a general standpoint? Yeah, again, uh, I I know I've harped on a lot, but t- just having a plan. Um, and you know, as you all went through school, you're probably familiar with a particular type of delivery unit or setup. If that's not what you want to to go with moving forward in you, your new practice, make sure that you allow time for yourself to to get familiar with that new style of delivery unit. Uh, you don't want to uh, do any kind of training on the job there. So know what 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 equipment or what style that you want to go with. Again, is that a rear treatment? Is that a, over the patient? Uh, is that a side delivery? So that's one area that I would uh, encourage the doctors to. To, to be more familiar with it or, or have a plan with. And, and watching the dollars uh, on that is, is uh, of particular importance. Uh, Tony mentioned earlier, you know, uh, an operatory six to $12,000, something like that. Obviously, just a dental chair without the operatory can be, can be cheaper, can probably start at three dollars $4,000, but you are gonna need that rear treatment cabinet uh, probably, unless you just have a, a little delivery cart, uh, which you could do. But if you have the, the rear delivery cabinet, you're probably looking at, uh, with us, uh, somewhere around $5,000 and, and adding the delivery unit to that. So uh, there's there's trade-offs. Uh, there's there's some savings that you can do, but other things are, are going to cost you. And that's, that's why planning, that's why sitting and, and talking uh, with us, with, with somebody about what you want to do and not just shopping for this equipment, make sure and share that plan so that 
you know, whoever you're talking to knows that you do have a plan <laughs> and, and you're not just, you know, shopping for this, that, and the other thing, uh, that this is how it all fits together so that everybody is on the same page moving forward. Correct. And, and focus on the ROI of equipment, the return on investment. Your fee is going to be the same regardless of the price you paid for that chair or operatory. So, so think about that. You want something that, again, is aesthetically pleasing, it's affordable, and, and uh, it, it fits within your budget. So that is key when, when, when outfitting an office. I think those are all great points. And um, I, I think there are kind of themes that we'd like to talk about without the season. So I think this, it's nice that you guys are on the same page with a lot of our other guests um, and the importance of planning and um, keeping budgets low. I, I I'd expect that come from you, Bob, being the, uh, seems like you're more of the, the numbers guy. So, um, <laughs> so that was, a... well, we, you know, n- n- number one, we, we like satisfied customers. Um, and, uh, you know, if, if we can, if we can do that and, and, uh, keep, keep them happy and, and, uh, keep us profitable, then, uh, everybody wins. Um, I really, don't we we just had a, a meeting this morning uh, with, with some of our staff uh, talking about that that we need to make sure that we're always seeing uh, dentists as as clients that we want to continue uh, to have options for. We love the repeat business uh, that that we that we get from these, and and it's not just a, a one-off customer uh, that calls and orders something. Although we do a lot of that because we do we do a lot of parts sales uh, if somebody has. Uh, some older equipment they can't find parts elsewhere. A lot of times they can they can find that uh, on our website or, or call us and, and and we can sell that. But uh, truly, you know, we, we do multiple new office layouts. We've got the design team to to work and and get you exactly what you want in the space that that you're going to outfit and uh, and then make sure that that everything fits and. If we do that and do that right, yes, you're going to be a satisfied customer and you're going to come back and talk to us about supplies or you're going to come back and, and talk to us about uh, additional needs as you build out your practice. And that's what we want. So you kind of brought up a point and I think we'll we'll close on this one. Um, so we've talked about startups. That's what our whole season about. Um, but we did not have anybody in the equipment sector on for our season about acquisitions. So when somebody buys a practice and um, you know they, they contact you guys for maybe some equipment needs, uh, what are common things that you see that people are buying when they buy offices that are already equipped? Uh, George, you mean as far as the equipment side of it? Yeah, you know, if, if I'm because I'll be buying a practice here pretty soon, and so I'm going to go in there, and you know, maybe I'll find that I'm needing something that it's missing, or um, I'd like to, you know, I, you know, there's always like an immediate need that maybe I would feel for equipment. Um, so, what what types of things are people usually buying after they acquire a practice? Okay, yeah, a good question. Um, and, and that all depends on the practice that they might have acquired. How old is that equipment? Um, is it antiquated? Uh, is it fairly new? Did the doctor upgrade before he sold the practice? So you want to take a look at that. Now, one of the options that we give our clients and our customers is we'll buy that used equipment. We're pretty specific on what uh, types we buy. But we will we will look at that and make an offer or a trade in value, if you will. So you can sell us the existing equipment that uh, is in that practice that you've acquired, and then we will go through again the the process of choosing uh, new equipment or refurbished with new equipment as well. But to get more specific with with your question, it, it usually entails uh, something along the lines of a a digital pan uh, that is missing. It may be that uh, uh, as again, as I mentioned earlier, it may be a handheld x-ray, uh, getting rid of some of those wall mount x-rays, um, or it could be that, uh, again, the doctor um, wasn't plumbed for nitrous, so we may sell a, a, a mobile nitrous. And then some of the smaller equipment like the the autoclaves, the ultrasonic cleaners, curing lights, um, things like that. Gotcha. All right. Well, I think, do you guys have anything else for audience before we wrap this up? No, I think you've had uh, some very good questions and uh, just know that Dental Planet stands ready uh, to, to help, whether it is uh, filling in a, a few pieces in an existing office or uh, starting from scratch and, and uh, doing the whole thing, including the design. Uh, our, our team has years of, of experience in working with doctors all over the country. And as we said, we've got the uh, 
installation and, and service personnel around the country as well to uh, to take care of it, uh, scoop to nuts. Yep, and you know I encourage you guys to reach out to Dental Planet. Uh, when I was doing my research for our sponsor this season, um, they were one of the companies that I kept coming back on, so I reached out to them, and um, they are a sponsor for the All season. Right, and if you so mention intro, our podcast, I said I would ask you about your, your equipment purchases. Um, so I definitely and, encourage uh, the you to do that. I'm most interested and I appreciate you guys um, coming is on the today. Comb beam. You bought a comb beam pretty early on, episode, and so I'm yes, curious to hear when you bought it and how and why. Thank you very much, George. We I bought it in month two because I did not buy Pano. And uh, I, I do implants my practice, and uh, I, I used it on a daily basis at the practice I was at before. So I knew right away that I was getting cone beam, and nothing was going to stop me. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, was it not like nerve wracking, maybe, or I don't know the right word, but to to justify, you know, maybe a larger purchase without really having the patient flow, or the no, that didn't, that didn't honestly didn't bother me at all. Um, it because it's it's literally uh, like an appendage to me. I mean, it's it's. It's like my loops, like I needed my cone beam um, at this point. Um, I wish I bought a better one. That's my that's my only. Is actually George, you can bring this up. It, it's a close subject to my heart. I bought the worst cone beam in the world, and I hate it. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, I bought it on price, so uh, you know I'm a startup, so I bought the cheapest cone beam I could possibly buy with the largest field of view. So I bought like a. Uh, I'm gonna reverse this company, but it's a uh, it's Acteon, the the Trium X Mind. And it's the cheapest cone beam out there. So you guys want cheap? This is one for you. Do you mind sharing the price, uh, or is that is that too much? Yeah, actually, I was taking um, this was during my I was taking a one year ortho continuum. So I was like, all right, I need a cone beam, I need a SAF, um, and I had I was already using their sensors. Uh-huh. So I already had Acteon Sopro sensors. Again, bad purchase, but this didn't they didn't sway me with the cone beam, um, and. Um, and so I needed this stuff, and so they, I think it might have been like 67, something like that. It was crazy cheap for a... Uh, well, for, for a Ceph combination, yeah. For a Ceph combination, you know, it's 8 by 11, um, you know, big, big field of view for what I need. Um, and I'll tell you, it's, you know, and you don't really know what you're getting until you use it. I mean, I, I, I looked at the Plan Meccas, I looked at the font text, and I sat down with the reps, I did my due diligence, and, it, and I just chose on price. And uh, if I did it again, I would go with just a Vatek. I just wouldn't even think about it. Just, What's the just cost difference? Um, Vatek, uh, they range depending on what you need. Um, I think the one that I'd want is around like 100000 So probably probably about close to 33000 in difference. Um, so it's a solid yeah, 50% more. Yeah, roughly. Um, you, know, uh, you know, in the end, that... I, it's not a bad person. It, it, just taking my panos literally pays for the machine itself, if not more. Um, you know, there is an ROI on it, and then ROI on the procedures I do. It works. It is just. Um, it's a. I'll tell you. I'll just throw some. It's a European company. They have no. The software is glitchy. There's no tech. There's no support for it, and it. I have glitches on it like every day. So it drives me crazy. So I would. I would just sway everybody from getting that one, but I would definitely sway people to getting a cone beam. It is. It works. I can. It's very, uh, very diagnostic. I can see what I need to see. I can. I can do guided surgeries. I can do everything I need. It just has its little. You gotta finesse it a little bit. Yeah, and you know, so um, let's let's kind of maybe generalize this. Not roasting a company, but like yeah. you know, so software support. Um, you know, a company with great support yeah. is an important thing. Um, you yeah. know, what what other things should somebody looking for if you had to purchase another company? What yeah. So. So this this machine had ten year warranty, probably the best out there. Uh, even warranty the sensors. Um, you know, I don't think it, you'll find one that's longer. Um, so long and, warranty. You know, we talked about in the interview, and then the support and then for the for the support um, calibration. Uh, so they will actually come out to my my practice once a year and calibrate the machine um, by hand. Some of the Vatex themselves actually calibrate themselves. You never need to have that to kind of self calibrate. Um, so if you think about that, um, it's not really the, a big deal when they can machine can actually potentially do it itself. Um, you want support and you want, um, functionality. Um, so my machine, I feel it's not diagnostic on anything, but taking it an image on high, believe it or not. Um, I cannot, it's hard for me to read anything else on low medium, but I can only read kind of on high. Um, and so when they sell things with this, with the smart exposure or, or green exposure, 
Um, you know, those images may not be diagnostic enough for like, say things like guided surgery or endo. You might be able to see like, um, kind of get a, a generalization of what's going on there, but you got to bump it up a little bit to actually get some accuracy on those machines. Okay. So, you know, I think definitely, um, you know, but again, you know, you did purchase it in a startup. And so I think you, you right now you're in a place where you have confidence that you could have afforded a bigger machine, uh, maybe higher yeah. price point, you know, but back then I think you may, you may not have had that type of confidence. And so, um, yeah. don't be too hard on yourself, Jonas. Oh, um, no, no, no. I mean, a lot of great decisions. My, I just, I, my homie is uh, not a good one. So, um, but, 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 uh, yeah, as far as equipment purchases, that, that it's definitely my, one of my best purchases in terms of ROI and how often I use in my practice. I don't take a cone beam on everybody, but, um, I, I, I take it on a lot of people. So what other equipment purchases, um, do you feel like you made that were very important? And, you know, in terms of timeline wise, um, kind of the, the timeline we were talking about was, you know, during construction is when you're doing a lot of your equipment purchasing. Yeah. Is that about yeah. what you did too? Yeah. Um, so if you're buying, buying large equipment, such as compressors, vacuums, um, you know, the purchase doesn't just end at the receipt, you know, it also comes with installation, timing of getting the equipment. It can take up to a, even a month to get some chairs. So you have to have some lead time there, even just on a, just a regular patient chair. Um, but then also you, they need some engineering behind them. So you need to purchase the equipment early enough time frame where you can tell them, we can actually can tell them, hey, I need mechanical drawings uh, for your devices to send to my contractor. So there's still some communication there that needs to be followed up with of communicating to your contractor on what equipment's going to come in there, and they need to submit that with the permits to the city. So um, th there's more to it than just purchasing the, the equipment. Yep, totally. And uh, yeah. I appreciate you, you know, coming on and, you know, being honest about your comb beam uh, situation. Oh, yeah. I think yeah. that'll help a lot of people out um, is, you know, maybe, you know, the price point is a big deal, but, you know, I think after it's been in the practice for a while, you tend to forget how much you paid and tend to focus on the things that bother you. So... I appreciate you uh, coming on and explaining that. And, you know, kudos to the guys at Dental Planet. Really great interview. Um, if you guys have any, you know, you know, any equipment needs at all, contact the guys at Dental Planet and uh, mention Shared Practices, and they'll give you a discount on top of your, your order. And so uh, hope thanks for guys listening to the Shared Practices podcast, and we'll see you next week.